A very, very good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the launch of our new course. Welcome to Carmina Burana. As I'm sitting here, looking out of the window, and just looking at the amount of light still in the sky at this time of day. It's nearly 5 p.m. here in the UK. And of course, if you've been with us uh, really throughout the winter, you'll recall starting rehearsals for things like Britain Ceremony of Carols and Rutter's Requiem in the dark. Well, everyone, the world turns, the wheel turns, and we are finding ourselves starting rehearsals while it's still light. It's going to get dark over the coming hour or so, but throughout this course, by the time we finish in the sixth week of this course, it will be light as we start and finish. And that is entirely in keeping with the theme of Carmina Barana, which is all about the great wheel, the turning of the world, the turning of fate, and the turning of our fates linked to it. It is a remarkable work. I know many of you have enjoyed learning it and singing it before, well, I can pretty much guarantee you've not had an experience of Carmina like this one. Car uh, the Choir of the Earth is going to absolutely, I think, not only love, enjoy, uh, find it thrilling. It's going to be the most incredible uh, piece I think we've put together so far. We've got a brand new piano arrangement by Anna. We've got the best vocalists in the world in the form of the Fieri Consort. And of course, all of you will be seeing this as well. I'm so excited to take you through it. And just bear with me as always as I run through some uh, sound checks and I shall be right with you. As I glance at myself over on the side, I could do with being uh, just shifting myself up a little bit. So just excuse me a second. Drag and drop conductor time. And here we go. Bloop, that's better. Slightly less of the shell, slightly more of my smiling face. The other thing I need to do is just make sure that I've got my presentation. I am, as you know, a teacher of many years experience. And so there is going to be a presentation for this evening. A, a, a quiz at the end is optional. <laughs> but I thought I'd, I'd show you um, a little bit of additional information. It always helps, doesn't it? A bit of context for this magnificent piece uh, so that you all, well, know what's what. So let's pop that in there. That's not the right one, Ben. That's the right one. Good. So do I wish to remove that? It's lovely to see so many of you here. I hope you're all having a good day. Let's do a quick sound check. So O oh, Fortuna. Oh, <laughs> that'll wake you up. Fortuna Plango. Fortuna Plango, Vulnera, Stil, Antibus, Ocelis. Marvellous. Veris Leta. Gosh, that's loud. Let's turn that down a little bit. And a little bit more. <laughs> uh, Ecce Gratum, which we'll listen to tonight. This is the one that sounds like Christmas time. It's so good. Marvellous. Floret Silver. We won't be learning this one this week, but it's always good to hear it. Oh, fabulous. Just to warn you, the this is possibly the most intensely collected uh, 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 range of earworms in history. Every one of these movements is full of repeated motifs, ideas that will just get thoroughly stuck in your head. And um, if you're going to, as I think many of you are, if you're going to sing multiple lines as well and record multiple parts and you're thoroughly welcome to do that, it, it's just going to get more intense. So just to warn you, you think you've sung Carmina before, um, but you haven't sung it with Choir of the Earth and it really is going to be an amazing course. So excited. Let me just check if I press my button here that you can see the slide. Good, good, good. So that's our slides ready to go. Back to the chat. So I think it's all working. Oh, there's one more to try. Kramer. Marvellous. Marvellous. I don't mind saying, even at this point, and I will continue to do so throughout the course, 
the standard of the music making on this one. It's another leap forward. It really is. The Fieri Consort are singing this absolutely superbly. And we have the phenomenal playing of, uh, of Anna, um, who has, again, I'll tell you in more detail, but has created a, a special arrangement of Carmina for us. If you look at the two piano version, it's meant for four hands, but actually what Anna has done is to go right back to the original score and in some cases played in additional parts, meaning you couldn't uh, have this played by two pianists. You need in some cases three or even four. So it's a custom uh, multiple piano arrangement put together for us by Anna. She has spent much of the last three months recording all of this for all of us everyone and I'm so excited to share it with you and it's not even the final version because uh, she's going to be adding all the percussion in as well things like timpani and big drum it's just going to be a brilliant brilliant project when it's all put together well thank you all for your lovely messages and uh, just so you know Anna is watching live at the moment she's downstairs um, beaving away preparing dinner for the family but she is watching and listening so she will read your comments and thank you in advance for all the nice things you're going to say and let me welcome everyone who's watching of course this is a public facing stream everything from tomorrow will as always be uh, unlisted so only available to those of you who have signed up uh, for this particular month and next month as you'll need but for those of you watching and if you're on the fence about signing up for this one well I hope tonight convinces you to come and take part in this unique performance of Carmina where you get to sing far more than you would normally do in a face-to-face -face choir you will hear every single word of this text beautifully recorded by Fieri uh, and in the end we're going to put together something very very special indeed watch this space for a little bit more information but let me welcome as i say everyone watching later on whether you're uh, here live whether you watch later on you are all so very welcome hello to everyone who is here live but not in the live chat and i do hope you enjoy tonight as well and then hello everyone over here it's fair to say the joint is jumping nearly 200 people at the moment watching and more joining with every passing moment so welcome all of you and I uh, hope you're as excited as I am for Carmina. What a brilliant course this is going to be. So let me welcome you. And these are the names as provided to me by YouTube. The people have been chatting in the last few minutes. So if I miss you off, very sorry. But uh, you are also very welcome. Hello, Adrian. Hello, Atty. Hello, Alexandra. Hello, Alison. Hello, Amsam. Hello, Anna. Hello, Andrea. Hello, Andrew. Hello, Angela. Hello, Anne. Hello, Annalisa. Hello, Anne. Hello, Annie. Hello, Barbara. Hello, Barbara. Hello, Bev. Hello, Bob. Hello, Breda. Hello, Brenda. Hello, Bridget, hello Carol, hello Caroline, hello Kat, hello Mark, hello Christine, hello Christine, hello Christine, hello Claire, hello Claire, hello Dave, hello Jill, hello Deborah, hello Dorothy, hello Eileen, hello Ellen, hello George, hello Jill, hello Gillian, hello Gillian, hello Gina, hello Glennis, hello Gloria, hello Graham, hello Gwyn, hello Heather, hello Helen, hello uh, Epi. Hello, Iris. Hello, Jackie. Hello, Jackie. Hello, Jackie. Hello, Jane. Hello, Jane. Hello, Jane. Hello, Jane. Hello, Jane. Hello, Jean. Hello, Jenny. Hello, Jill. Hello, Jill. Hello, Johnny. Hello, Viv. Hello, Josie. Hello, Joy. Hello, Joyce. Hello, Judith. Hello, Judy. Hello, June. Hello, Karen. Hello, Kareth. Hello, Kate. Hello, Kathy. Hello, Kathy. Hello, Kitty. Hello, Leslie. Hello, Linda. Hello, Lisa. Hello, Lisa. Hello, Liz. Hello, Lorna. Hello, Lucy. Hello, Lucy. Hello, Lynn. Hello, Linda. Hello, Lindsay. Hello, Margaret. Gosh, there's loads of you. Hello, uh, Marion. Hello, Mary. Hello, Michael. Hello, Mike. Hello, Moira. Hello, Nasa. Hello, Nicola. Hello, Nina. Hello, Nona. Hello, Pam. Hello, Pam. Hello, Pascal. Hello, Paula. Nearly there. Hello, Pippa. Hello, Richard. Hello, Robert. Hello, Jean. Hello, Roz. Hello, Ruth. Hello, Ruth. Hello, Sandra. Hello, Sarah. Hello, Sarah. Hello, Sarah. Hello, Seamus. Hello, Sheila. Hello, Sean. Hello, Soraya. Hello to Stephanie. Hello, Sue Ellen. Hello, Susan. Hello, Susanna. Hello, Suzanne. Hello, Suzanne. Hello, Terry. Hello, Ulla. Hello, Vanessa. Hello, Wendy. Hello, Wendy. And thanks so much for coming tonight. That's all we've got time for. I do hope you've enjoyed... No, 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 no kidding. We're going to get started. Do enjoy the uh, session this evening. We're going to have a look, a little preview of the first few choruses and looking ahead to this week. And welcome everyone to our latest course. This is Carmina Barana. So let's go full screen and we can start the show. Here we go. So a very, very good evening, Choir of the Earth and friends. Thank you so much for joining us at the start of our second course 
of 2023. We've just been learning the wonderful Rutter Requiem, and thank you to everyone who is hard at work at recording for that course. Uh, I've received the news today that A Cappella Wonders 3 is ready for inspection, so I shall be receiving the first of the final versions of those tracks very soon and looking forward to premiering those for you next week. Uh, and of course, things like the Mass of Life uh, are still underway and still being mixed but we have such a lot of fantastic music behind us it's great to be here though looking ahead at the journey we have together over the next six weeks with this frankly essential piece of choral music it's one of those experiences where everyone needs to have sung Carmina Barana at some point and if you have sung it well it's always a good time to revisit because the piece well, it touches you in different ways as you go through your life. When you sing it, when you are uh, in the first flushes of youth, it means one thing. When you are at perhaps a different time of your life, perhaps later on in life, it hits differently. And the great thing is the music is so much fun. We're going to have a brilliant time. Now, what I've done, everyone, in preparation for this course is I've put together a little bit of a presentation, which I'm going to show you now, let me just bring this on screen, the magic of technology. So let's talk Carmina Barana. Now, obviously, in terms of the uh, outline and the structure of this course, you can find all the details on the members area in the website. That'll uh, outline uh, during which weeks we're teaching in the normal manner, that is to say full choir Monday and then rehearsals on Monday, Tuesday and later on Thursday. There will be a couple of weeks uh, where we have to change that round, uh, most notably this week, uh, because obviously I'm travelling around the country with Mark and we're performing Messiah at various places. So do please keep an eye on your weekly roundup emails and do check the members area for the times and dates of rehearsals because they will change and just I don't want anyone to uh, be disappointed by missing a session they otherwise would have been able to make. So let's talk Carmina Barana. Um, it's a really fabulous piece. It's relatively modern. That is to say it was written within the last hundred years. But of course, the text, uh, the words, the, the, the subject of it are very, very old indeed. Let me introduce you, of course, to our composer, to Herr Orff, Karl Orff, um, who was born in 1895 and died in 1982. He was an immensely important uh, composer and music educator in Germany. Um, he was born into a very musical family, where have we heard that before? Happens so often with these great composers. Uh, studied piano from the age of five and then went on to study music, uh, in particular cello and organ were his main instruments. Interestingly, and I've picked out these two particular paragraphs because they have resonance for us in Choir of the Earth with some of our recent projects. So in 1911, Karl Orff wrote a large-scale piece called Zarathustra, uh, which was his Opus 14, and this was a large-scale work for baritone voice, uh, three large male voice choruses, uh, plus wind, percussion, harps, piano and organ. So there, for those of you that were on the Delius Mass of Life course, there is a little link there. The same text treated by a composer only a couple of years, really, after Delius. And, of course, Orff's version sounds very different indeed. And during the 1920s, uh, Orff then began adapting works from earlier musical eras, in particular the music of the Renaissance and the Baroque eras. And in particular, he put together the first theatrical presentation of Monteverdi's opera L'Orfeo in many, many centuries. And he, he received quite a bit of ridicule and ire from the uh, music critics at the time. We thought, why are you going back into antiquity? Why don't you write uh, modern music, contemporary music? But he persisted. He wrote, uh, put together an awful lot of contemporary performances of this early style. And this brought him to the text of the medieval collection of 254 poems called Carmina Barana. And these date all the way back to the 11th, 12th century. So these are ancient, ancient texts. Now, the texts themselves were only discovered, it turns out, in 1803. So they lay pretty much undisturbed, undiscovered for hundreds of years in a monastery in uh, in the town of Benedict Bayern in Bavaria, which actually gave it its name, Carmina meaning songs, Barana of Bayern. So Carmina Barana are these songs from uh, Bavaria. Now the songs, uh, there's no sugar coating it, folks. This is not a requiem mass. This is not a gloria. It is not sacred text. These are bawdy, 
irreverent, satirical, sometimes downright rude texts. And I, as I was getting this broadcast ready, I was glancing at some of the comments, people who'd sung it years and years and years ago and hadn't actually ever realised what it was they were singing. My advice to you is if you are of a sensitive disposition, don't look too closely at the translations for some of these texts. Just take it from me. The music is fantastic. The themes are human shall we say this is a humanist work um and you are going to find it a lot of fun um there's text in medieval latin a little bit in middle high german there's some bits in macaronic uh, language which is to say a mixture of latin german french vernacular very much sung as it would be spoken these texts were written by mainly students uh, mainly clergy, when Latin, as I've said here, was the lingua franca uh, across Italy and Western Europe. Most of the poems and songs appeared to be the works of uh, of students, of clergy, which um, satirised the Catholic Church. So there's been a lot of controversy about this work throughout the years. There are still a number of uh, churches and cathedrals where you cannot perform Carmina Burana because they won't allow it. Uh, no such restrictions for us here on Choir of the Earth. I just wanted you to be aware you know it's a little bit like in the late 90s early 2000s where you'd buy an album with just parental guidance on it just be aware some of the lyrics here are um a bit choice well look uh, a bit more history of the piece before we get into listening to it it was first performed in frankfurt at the opera house there on the 8th of june 1937 and what many people don't know is it's actually part of a collection a triptych a collection of three pieces Carmina Burana being the first, the second being called Catulli Carmina, and the third work being called the Triunfo di Aphrodite. I'd be very interested to hear from people in the live chat who have actually performed either of the other two works, because it's usually Carmina Burana uh, that, uh, that, that is the one that's performed. Now, I'm going to speed up here because there's a lot of text otherwise. Uh, what's fascinating, though, for me about Carmina Burana is it's designed as a wheel. And you'll often see the Wheel of Fortune uh, represented in the score. And I've got my vocal score here, as I know many of you have, and you see the Wheel of Fortune on the front. Um, and so this idea of the turning wheel, I was just talking about the seasons, the turning wheel of fortune, you can see written round the outside of the wheel... Uh, the four phases. So you have Renyabo, I shall reign. Renyo, I reign. Renyavi, I have reigned. And sum sine regno, I am without a realm. So the idea being that this, that no matter what where you are on the wheel, it's going to turn and move you around. Now within each musical scene in Carmina Burana, more on that in a minute, sometimes within a single movement, the wheel of fortune turns and joy will turn to bitterness, hope will turn to grief. There's a lot of, uh, of sudden changes, musically speaking and thematically, during this, with O Fortuna acting as both the introduction and the conclusion, the coming full circle, if you will, of the wheel. And there are five main sections in between those, uh, those repeats of, uh, of O Fortuna. You have In Spring... You have uh, in the meadow, you have in taberna, in the tavern, which is mostly for the tenors and basses, uh, and much fun had there. And then the court of love and Blanche Floor and Helen. So those are the main sections and the movements are contained within them. And, well, just before we start listening to and enjoying this music, I want to just tell you a little bit about what Choir of the Earth is going to do. Now, most of the time when you've performed Carmina Burana, many of you will have performed it with a full orchestra. Now, we are actually going to use a two-piano and percussion arrangement. And uh, Carl Orff himself authorised the creation of this cut-down performance. It creates a really dynamic, really vibrant sound and allows the choir to really shine, particularly it given our our strengths, everyone, and particularly with Connor's great gifts. So we, Inquire of the Earth, are going to learn and record all of the chorus parts, and you are more than welcome to record as many parts as you would like. Uh, if you are a bass who sings tenor, we would love to have submissions from you. Likewise, sopranos who sing alto and tenor, please do. Just go mad. Record as much of it as you can. We will be asking you, everyone, to nominate members of your family who are uh, of the younger persuasion, uh, children and young people, to sing in the children's choruses, the regazzi, 
and uh, my children are going to record the guide tracks for those. There will be a special teaching session for the children's choir coming up in, I believe, week four. That is on your schedule. And uh, we would love to have as many submissions from young people in your family as possible. They will join and be part of the children's choir of the earth. And we last heard them sing in Christmas 2020 with that wonderful once in Royal David City. It's long overdue to have them back singing with us. We also have Fieri Consort singing the solos. And Anna, as I've said, has created a special arrangement of the Carmina Barana um, accompaniment just for us. So you'll hear details that you won't hear anywhere else it's just here on Choir of the Earth. And we're also going to have a special video production, which is going to tie in closely to Orff's original concept of Carmina Burana. He didn't see it as a static choral work, which would be performed as a cantata, if you like, in a, in a church or cathedral, which is actually often the way that it is performed today. Um, he subscribed to this concept called Teatrum Mundi, which is the idea of music and movement and speech are inseparable. And he envisaged Carmina Burana being linked to dance or visual cues, visual aspects. And what I'm going to be asking dear Mark Cease to do is to create a special video production that actually goes beyond what we'd normally do. We'll actually react to and show what's in the words on screen. It's going to be an amazing uh, visual experience at the end matching the incredible uh, audio and the wonderful sound that you are going to create to just put together a unique performance, as I've said here, of an essential choral classic. So, everyone, that's my introduction. I am, as you can probably tell, quite excited about this project. I've been looking forward to it for months and months and months. I think we should enjoy the very first piece, which also happens to be the very last piece in Carmina Burana. I'm going to show you the words up on screen. Uh, so here we go. And uh, you will recognise this piece if you have ever watched TV or listened to the soundtrack of a movie because it's been used in literally hundreds of TV and film productions. O Fortuna is one of the best known and most loved choral pieces in the repertoire. Uh, we even sang and recorded our own version of this for summer school a uh, year before last, but this is a completely new arrangement, completely new recording. So I'm going to press the button and my goodness me, we are going to hear from Fortune. You've got the translation here on screen. If you'd like to sing along, you're very welcome to. I shall give you the notes for those of you that wish to. Basses, tenor one, tenor two, alto, soprano two, soprano one. Let's get started with O Fortuna, everyone. Here we go. And... Oh, oh, oh. 
<laughs> goodness me, that piece never fails to stir the spirit, does it? Oh my goodness me, from that incredibly memorable and recognisable introduction down to that simmering, furious, brooding, quiet sound and then exploding with just pent-up frustration and fury into that last section. Well, just imagine your voices, as always, everyone, combined and there's going to be additional percussion in there. There's gongs, there's cymbals, there's uh, glockenspiel, all of which will be added to create the final sound. But I'm sure you'll agree we're off to a brilliant start with that rendition of O Fortuna with the Fieri Consort singing again. Absolutely magnificently. Now, one of the things, everyone, about Carmina that you don't really get so much of in a live performance unless everyone is really on the ball is the idea that the movements should proceed pretty much without a pause without a break if you have your uh, vocal scores with you if you see at the very end of O Fortuna it's marked attacker and that means go straight on no delays no sort of <clears throat> moment for the orchestra to cough and turn their pages and the conductor to get his uh, his handkerchief out and very theatrically mop his brow no straight on into the next movement so from that big big d major chord we go straight on into fortune plango so let's have a look at this one and what you'll notice everyone as we progress through the work is that the amount of material that is repeated will start to become very, very apparent. I was speaking the other day to Roger Durston, who is, of course, our choir president alongside Marina Mahler, and he said he always, when he, he got into a new, uh, a, a new job, whether that was running a big music service or headmaster of the Brit School, all of which things he did, he would always start with Carmina Burana because it's a really great piece to sing, but the amount of material that you have to learn is not huge. So I will say that. It's not to say it's an easy piece, but compared to some of the pieces we learnt last year, it's a bit more straightforward. It's a really good one for people who perhaps haven't sung in a big choir before, haven't sung in a big choir for a while. It's very, very accessible. So just note, everyone, that this one repeats. We've got three verses. So when you get to the end uh, of the piece itself, uh, it goes back and we sing all three verses. So that's a long-winded way of saying attacker. We go straight in with the bass is singing, and you'll hear Fortune Plango. So let's go, here's the second movement, everyone, enjoy. Fortune Plango, vulnera, stir antibus ocellis, con sua mihi vulnera, sopra i tre belis.
How about that? That's ah, such a great, great rendition. So, so good. And those of you that have sung it before, I hope you'll agree with me. One of the brilliant things, as always, about Choir of the Earth is that there'll be no fluctuations in the tempo. You know what it's like with a uh, with choirs. The conductor will set off at a tempo and the choir will go, no, 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 we want to sing this a bit slower. And the, uh, the orchestra will go, well, we want to sing this faster. There's this sort of tug of war with the tempo. Um, well, th there's none of that here. We're going to have to sing at a real clip. We're going to have to get all these words out, focus on the detail, focus on getting it sounding exactly as Fieri have laid it down for us. And what we'll end up with is, I genuinely believe, one of the most exciting, dynamic, and one of the most um, audibly legible pieces uh, of, of recording that we've done to date. It's going to sound amazing. And I'm sure you'll agree, Anna's playing is just unbelievable it's been the soundtrack to our lives here as a family for the last three or four months and she has spent such a lot of time on these tracks i'm so grateful to her and i'm sure you would all echo that so that is the second movement and you can see because it's the same thing three times it's not going to take us that long to learn but getting it to the standard where it's ready to perform is going to be something i'm going to need to turn over to all of you i know you'll be extraordinarily diligent and responsible because that that's what you are, folks. That's one of the things about Choir of the Earth. Everyone who takes part in the recording, you know, you take that um, that need to be, you know, absolutely on the ball and you take it really seriously and what will come out at the end is going to be stunning. So that's the second movement, everyone. And that one needs to, again, follow Attacker into the first section, Primo Verde. Uh, and so this is the first piece where you start to get something a little bit more gentle. You start to get a flowing shape to the music. And this one, if I bring up the, uh, if I bring up the words here, translates as the merry face of spring turns towards the world. Sharp winter now flees, vanquished. Clothed in diverse garb, flora reigns. The sweet sounds of the woods praise her in song. And so this is the coming of spring. And you can hear it. You can hear the ice cracking. You can hear the water starting to flow after the winter's cold. And uh, speaking of someone here for whom I think spring is maybe on the way, this is a very timely piece. So let's enjoy the first movement of In the Spring. And this will be the third piece we look at this week in our rehearsals. So let's go. Here we go. Movement number three. Thank you. 
verse 3. That is absolutely one of my favourite movements in Carmina. Just full stop. It's beautiful. Uh, now, the, the challenge with all of these movements is going to be... Well, the, the big challenge for all of us is the rhythm. The rhythm combined with the words. Most of the tunes are relatively straightforward. You're not going to find... With a couple of exceptions, you're not going to find particularly difficult harmonies to deal with, and we certainly don't have polyphony. It's not you're not going to suddenly turn a page and find an eight-part fugue uh, or anything like that. It's very very straightforward from that point of view. But rhythmically, you can probably already tell we've got shifts in time signature. So sometimes we are uh, with a feeling of eight long beats in the bar, sometimes four, sometimes two, sometimes three. And it's about just making sure you know where you are. And I would suggest get very familiar with your scores. Follow the guide tracks through. You know, it's it, it's fine to just run your finger along to keep up with the words and then practice the words along with Fieri. I'm going to make the blanket statement here and now that if there's any doubt as to what to sing and pronunciation-wise, follow Fieri, okay? Listen to the Fieri pronunciation. That's the pronunciation we're going to use. That was what I discussed with Josh, so they've recorded to my specifications, and please do follow Fieri when it comes to the words. So those three movements are going to form the basis of our rehearsals in this coming week, but it would be uh, really very mean of me to stop things there, as I have this wonderful array of movements to play. So I'm going to play you uh, another three. So this is looking ahead into week two. Uh, so a little peek over the fence, if you will, at, uh, at an upcoming week. Now, uh, in between movements three and five, there is the most beautiful baritone solo, and you're not going to get to hear the solo movements until the concert. I think that's only fair. We want to keep some of the surprises back. Um, but just to say, those of you that are fans of uh, some of the really uh, essential classic recordings of this, in particular, the one that has always stuck with me is the one with Dietrich Fischer Diskau singing the baritone solo uh, with the uh, the Deutsches Opera uh, uh, chorus recording. It is fabulous, and we have based a lot of our musical uh, decisions on that. So you will love the final version when you hear it all with the Fieri, but it will be worth the wait. So let's move on to page 28, Ecce Gratum, which is movement number five. And uh, you see here, if you just have a quick glance, I've got my score here. You've got the tenors starting off with a beautiful, um, bright, very brassy... <laughs> little four note pattern with a grace note ecce gratum and then uh well it, again it sounds rather christmasy this even though it's not about that uh it's about the return of spring let's put the words back on screen for this one behold the pleasant and long sought spring bring, brings back joy purple flowers fill the meadows and the sun brightens everything sadness is now at an end summer returns and the harshness of winter now recedes so this is a song of spring and again the wheel is turning throughout this piece we started uh you know baying at the moon and 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 howling at fortune we now find ourselves in the springtime of the year and so the tenors are going to start off for us here everyone it's ecce gratum Oh, 
such a great piece. So much fun. Uh, again, the, the, the parts that repeat, once you've learnt the first time through, well, it's a matter of swapping the words out, making sure the dynamics match, and then just launching yourself at it. Lots of the bases to do there. We've got split bases. We've got a really uh, lovely contrast between all the various little sections there. Much fun to be had. I will be asking as many people that can sing the tenor line to record for me there. Tenors, ten altos, tenoras, everyone, please. You're very welcome to record because I need a good, strong start for each verse. Um, a few people are asking about the uh, the page numbers. So it seems that the pages are different between the paper score and the digital score. So what I will do is I'm not going to refer to page numbers. I should refer to uh, to rehearsal numbers and starts of sections and so on. So hopefully everyone will, will be able to spot the various numbers in boxes throughout, 31, 32, 34 and so on. Uh, that should hopefully allow us to all stay together. Uh, and in worst case scenario, I'll just make sure I've got a digital copy of the score so people don't get lost with that one as well. So yes, there we are. Now, following that is a really, really fabulous dance, uh, which is our opportunity to sit down and catch our breath. Uh, and Anna is uh, is working on the final version of this. Again, you're not going to get to hear it until the final performance. Um, but it's really good fun. And if you're glancing at it, you can see the time signature change from dum, 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 ba, 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 three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one. Changing time signature throughout. It's really, really exciting and huge fun. So looking forward to hearing that one when it's ready. Now let's move on to movement number seven. And again, we are well into next week's possibly even the week after teaching so this consider this a little preview of what's coming up but i really would heartily recommend to all of you if you have the time listen not just to our version but listen to a variety of recordings because that will inform your performance and your feeling of fun and enjoyment with this one it's got to sound full of confidence it's got to sound quite theatrical actually one of the mistakes i think people make is to treat this as a piece of choral music and it's better i think to think of it as a choral opera uh, a, a collection of pieces that comment on the human condition and encourage us all to to sing perhaps a little bit more <sighs> What's the right word? Sometimes when you sing things chorally, you have to sing with a choral character. And for this one, I'm going to be asking you to sing in a variety of different roles. I think the best comparison has got to be when we sang the opera courses, uh, whether that was on the summer school or the opera course the year before, where we were doing things like playing anvils and so on. I want that same sense of fun, that same sense of theatricality, because that's what it, it really, really needs. Let's talk about Floret Silva. And so this one, uh, let's bring the words up on screen. Floret, floret, floret silver. It's, uh, as you can see, the words translate as the noble forest blooms with flowers and leaves. Where is my lover of old? He has ridden away. Alas, who will love me? The woods are blooming all around, but I'm pining for my love. The woods are greening all around. Why is my lover away so long? He has ridden off. Alas, who will love me? One of the fascinating things about this is it starts in Latin and then repeats itself in Old German. Um, so it's very much sort of get, trying to get the message across in as many different languages as you can find. So this is the start of the seventh movement, Floret Silver. I'll give you the notes that, that you wish to sing along. And it's just got to have this wonderful explosion of sound. Floor it, floor it, floor it, silver nobilis. Okay, like the, uh, the, the, the giant explosion of colour uh, on the forest floor as the flowers come out. So here we go, is floor it, silver. Enjoy. Floor it, floor it, floor it, silver nobilis. Floor it, silver Thank you. 
gliding away. There you are, everyone. And a really good example there of that theatricality I was talking about. The fact you can hear the horse riding away. Da -da -dum, da -da -dum, da -da -dum. There's uh, When the percussion's dropped in as well, you'll hear the very careful placing of things like the timpani uh, and the drums to indicate the horse hooves as the lover rides off, uh, leave, leaving the poor lady uh, on her own and singing forlornly to the forest and uh, so much fun uh, that one is going to be uh, a bit of a challenge just getting it all together we'll probably in fact we will be breaking up these longer movements into chunks so that it's easier for you to do a really good take of as many of these as possible and yes that is a top b for those of you of the soprano persuasion we will be needing that top note uh, and otherwise, the rest of you will be, uh, well, doing what you can. So there we are. Now, that is the uh, almost the last movement I have for you today. I'm going to play you one more before we draw today's launch to a close. And we are officially then off to the races. We're going to listen to the eighth movement, uh, which in my score is, well, it's in page 54 in the paper score. It's uh, rehearsal number 61. OK, in the box, it's movement number eight, Krama Gibdivava Mir. And this one, well, I was talking with uh, my family about this, talking to Katie, uh, who is 14. And, uh, well, this is a very relevant, uh, very relevant movement to anyone who's got teenage girls in their lives or teenagers in general, actually. Uh, this is all about makeup. Merchant, give me rouge to make my cheeks red so that I can make the young men love me whether they will or not. Look at me, young men, let me please you. This, of course, remember the, the text of this comes from uh, the 11th and 12th century, so this is not modern ideals. But what is modern about it is that, well, people will make themselves up, whether they are male, female, young or old, they will make themselves look pretty uh, for the object of their affection. That's what this song is about. And what you hear is the um, uh, one of the things I love about this is the, the the vivacious fun that comes with the opening. But then there's the sound, uh, the humming as you're humming and putting the makeup on. So the, uh, the, the sopranos will sing the main tune and everyone else, we, we're going to be humming this beautiful uh, accompaniment. And it's the sound of us putting on our makeup collectively. All right. So here is the eighth movement. Going to make yourself look fabulous. Here we go, everyone. <laughs>
Christmas too. Now, of course, that movement will then proceed into the ninth movement, which is another instrumental. And you're starting to see, I'm sure, everyone, with the way some of these movements finish, there's a real sense of uh, uh, and what follows. Uh, are those of you that are fans of um, particularly minimalist music, the music of amazing composers like Philip Glass and Steve Reich and Terry Riley, a lot of their techniques particularly finishing on uh, on the sound of something that's not quite finished and just stopping is very much in keeping with the minimalist ideal and of course in our version it will just continue straight on uh, into that dance so that is all the music that I'm going to share with you tonight we're going to finish with one more sing through of O Fortuna because well it starts and ends Carmina Burana so it's only right that we should start and end our first rehearsal of this fantastic work all together um, before we sing it just to confirm that if you are watching tonight and you haven't signed up for the course it is of course absolutely fine please do come and join us there is uh, no restriction you can even join next week if you wish because all the rehearsals as always are going to be saved and you can watch them whenever you like um just to let you know we're going to be doing a little bit less of the live recording on this project mainly because we have so many movements to get through in six weeks i saw a comment flash past from dorothy who said, are we going to have plenty of time to record? The answer to that is absolutely we are. Um, we don't want to rush you, so we'll make sure you have plenty of time uh, to get all of these movements recorded. And you are more than welcome to start recording, really, this week, because we'll be uh, getting the rehearsals going tomorrow. By the end of this week, you will know the first three movements, everyone, and you're welcome to start recording. Or if you'd rather wait till you've had a chance to practice, that is fine as well. So we're going to finish today, as I say, everyone, with O Fortuna and then I shall see you for your sectional rehearsals tomorrow and Wednesday. Wednesday's going to be a bit of a bumper day this week because, as I've said, I shall be travelling up to Manchester on Thursday with Mark for our next leg in the Messiah Tour. I know I'm going to be meeting many of you face-to-face -face there and those of you that can't join us, well, if you can get to one near you, then please do, otherwise... This is where we are. Join us for Choir of the Earth Online. Uh, this is where we've been all along and look forward to seeing you uh, in your online rehearsals. But to finish today, basses, tenor one, tenor two, alto, soprano two, soprano one. Oh, Fortuna, let's finish off with a big sing. Here we go, everyone, and... Oh. Be 
There we are. Ladies and gentlemen, I am so thrilled to say that we have reached the end of the launch of Carmina Burana and everything that follows for the next six weeks is going to be the marvellous job of learning all of this fantastic music. Do please enjoy listening to the guide tracks. All of the One Voice Louders for the first eight movements are up there on the uh, 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 in the members area. I say eight movements. The first, uh, the first chorus is the first uh, six. So not the dance, not the solos, you won't hear those to the concert, but the first six choruses in terms of one voice louders are up there, ready for you to go along, have a little listen. This is one of those courses where spending time getting to know the words is going to be of great benefit for you because you don't have fast-moving semi-quaver lines like uh, Handel or Mozart, but you do have some tricky lyrics to get you to wrap your chops around. So do enjoy doing that. I will look forward to seeing you at your sectional rehearsals this week. And uh, thank you so much again for being here tonight. Looking forward to seeing you soon, folks. Take care. Bye-bye.